In 2005, 150 million tons of fish were harvested from wild fisheries and fish farms around the world. But when you sit down for your favorite plate of fish, rarely does it come to mind exactly where the fish came from or whether or not it's sustainable. But the author of Four Fish considers this a big enough problem. He wrote a book about it. Bloomberg's Eric Schatzker sat down with Paul Greenberg, the author of Four Fish, to discuss weather when it comes to fish. We are at a point of no return. We are with fish where we were with land food 10,000 years ago. In other words, we're just as humans 10,000 years ago came out of their caves and started wide-scale hunting of those sort of large megafauna and drove many of them into extinction and then chose, you know, four, four or five of each of them, you know, to, to be our domesticated uh, land food, we're sort of similarly placed with fish. I mean, there still are a lot of fish out there. Even Atlantic bluefin tuna, they're probably in the order of, you know, a, a few million of them left. So what we're talking about right now is the extinguishing of abundance, not the complete extinction of species, not yet. Now, you just mentioned bluefin tuna, an apt subject, because not only is it a delicious fish, mm -hmm. it is a fish that uh, I have to believe our viewers have consumed on a fairly <laughs> frequent basis. You find it in sushi restaurants, perhaps not all that frequently. Um, but bluefin tuna is good business. You can get several tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars for a giant bluefin tuna. And I was just taking a look at a company that calls itself Umami Sustainable Seafood, and I suppose that might make you snicker a little bit when I tell you what these guys do. They operate bluefin tuna farming pens. Yep. Uh, and you write about these yep. operations in Croatia and in Mexico. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, this is a company that was put together specifically to get into that business. The stock was trading at six cents mm -hmm. back in March. It's now valued at three dollars. So at least on the basis of what the stock market tells you, farming bluefin tuna is good business. Well, you know, except I think the stock market is mistaken in this case um, because they're not really farming. What they're doing is something called ranching. And when you ranch bluefin tuna, you collect juvenile wild fish and then you put them into pens and then you feed them, uh, fatten them up at a rate of sometimes 15 pounds of wild fish to make a single pound of bluefin tuna. So from an ecological point of view, it makes no sense, A, because you're taking wild juveniles, depleting the wild stock, and B, you're deploy depleting all these forage fish uh, and feeding them to the bluefin. There is some closed life cycle bluefin out there. That's a one kind of tuna called the kindai tuna that's farmed in Japan, where they actually do grow it from an egg all the way to an adult. But I still take issue with the fact that bluefin are warm-blooded, so they swim at 40 miles an hour. It's sort of like putting a jaguar in a pen or a cheetah in a pen. Why would you ever think that that was a good idea ecologically? Paul, are there any kinds of fish out there that do make sense to farm uh, from a financial and an ecological basis. Absolutely. Um, you know, you look at tilapia, and it often gets a bad rap, but um, tilapia grows extremely quickly. Uh, you can get a mature tilapia in about eight months. It's a vegetarian fish. Even though people are increasingly are feeding it fish meal, it can live as a vegetarian fish. So again, and, and, and it's funny, when people have tried to farm cod, for example, uh, they found that it's not economically viable. It takes too long, takes too much fish meal. Um, tilapia actually kind of outcompetes farmed cod on the market, and that's why you see much, much more farmed tilapia than you see farmed cod. But for there to be a change in the way that people buy fish, the way they think about these mm -hmm. things, they're going to have to get used to the idea of farm tilapia, and there's going to have to be a kind of a change in mindset, isn't there? Sure, but also, you know, keep in mind that there are sort of four flesh archetypes that we're looking for as consumers nowadays, sort of white and flaky, cod-like, steakyish, bass-like, pinkish, salmon-like, and sort of, you know, sushiable, tuna-like. And what I found in the course of my research is that there is a sustainable alternative for each one of these fish on the farm. You know, Arctic char, farmed Arctic char, great replacement for farmed salmon. Barramundi, uh, uh, Australian farm fish, great replacement for a lot of sort of those fish that are called bass. There's another fish called the Kona Kampachi uh, that's grown off of uh, 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 Hawaii that is a great, great uh, sushi fish and, you know, an adequate replacement for tuna. So, you know, everything has its doppelganger, its environmentally sound doppelganger out there. So there is some hope left. I definitely believe there is. And as I say, you know, we're in a period where we're talking about the extinguishing abundance. We're not in the point where we have to put radio collars around the last 500 bluefin and track them around the globe. There's still enough fish out there to bring these fish back, so let's just use them wisely. That was Eric Schatzker sitting down with the author of Four Fish.